Okay, so we have the files here. You can open them. The CSV files here can be opened using any spreadsheet software. So I'll just open them here. So this is how they look like. I'll just enlarge the text here. So let's start with the transcripts. So these are the transcripts. So we have the IDs, the four changes, log two, four changes, p value, p value. So here you can manually inspect uh, the data you have here and then maybe try to uh, get some additional um, information here. We have the filtered one here, which you can also check. There's also the FPKMs we generated for transcripts. So here we have the IDs, the genes, and the FPKM value themselves, etc. So you can just manually inspect and then just um, look at um, what you need. We also have the information for the genes. They are all here. The unfiltered, the filtered, and then the FPKM value, they are all here. So uh, this is how you extract the information and also try to manually inspect them. Now the plots are also here in this directory called plots. So here we have some um, plots here that I'm going to explain uh, very soon. So we have about five files here. Yes, so there are five figures here. So you should have the same. So let's go back now. Let's go to the slash you and then I'll explain these plots in details. So let's look at the first figure which shows the structure and expression levels of isoforms for the gene SIST in sample ER188234. If you look at the figure here, there are six isoforms for the gene. And the expression levels for these isoforms are represented using a color scheme. So the color scheme ranges from this side here to this side. So it's yellow, by the way. And so the lighter side here indicates low expression and then and the darker side here represents high expression. So if you look at the six isoforms here, isoform number four is highly expressed compared to the others. Okay, so that is one cool thing about the pipeline you are using. It allows you to study in detail a gene as well as the expression levels for its isoforms in a particular sample. And so that is how it goes. Now let's look at the next figure, which is the volcano plots. Volcano plots are 2D scatter plots that have the shape of a volcano. With volcano plots, the log 2 fold changes is on the x axis, and then on the y axis, we have the negative log of the p values. And by setting a threshold, you'll be able to identify genes that have been um, expressed significantly. So that means we are looking at um, significantly. Um, express genes that's what you can use the volcano plus to do and that means you'll be able to go further and then identify down regulated up regulated or those genes that are not differentially expressed so this is how volcano plots can be used to visualize the data and you can represent each of these groups using a color code here as has been shown here with the volcano plots you see that the left side has the down regulated genes, and on the right side, we have the up regulated genes. The middle side here has those genes that are not differentially expressed. You can go further to give additional labels to genes that are of interest to you. I made mention of threshold. So let's look at the R code so that will show you the threshold that I set to identify um, down regulated and then up regulated genes. So the threshold is here, it's in the code. So Genes that are upregulated should have their log 2 fold changes greater than 1 and also their p values less than 0 0.05. And then those that are down regulated should have log 2 fold changes less than negative 1 and then the p values less than 0 0.05. So that is how it is. Again, there is no standard threshold. And so you will have to uh, decide what threshold works best for you. And so I advise that you look at literature, you consult the experts, and then um, use whatever information you get to help you to set an appropriate threshold. So just take note of that. Let's go back to the plot. So uh, using this color scheme, um, it becomes easy to pinpoint these um, genes that are of interest and then um, do the interpretation better. Let's look at the next figure, which is the MA plots. MA plots are also 2D scatter plots. 
they are used to visualize gene expression data and also identify changes in gene expressions between two conditions. This plot here represents the transcripts. With MA plots, you have the log 2 of the means of the normalized read counts on the x axis, and then on the y axis, we have the log 2 fold changes. And by setting a threshold, you'll be able to identify those genes or transcripts that um, have been um, significantly expressed. So that is what you need to know. For this particular plot, I use the Q value to set the threshold. So um, Q value less than 0 0.05 indicates um, differentially expressed, and then those that are not less than 0 0.05 means that they are not differentially expressed. So that is how this can be interpreted. And we have a color code here to represent those two groups. With MA plots, the up and down regulated genes are at the extremes. So at the upper parts here will be the uh, up regulated genes or transcripts. In our case, we are dealing with transcript. This plot is for transcript. So the up, the, the upper region here will be for up regulated transcripts, and then uh, the lower region here will be for down regulated transcripts. And then the middle here are those that are not differentially expressed. Okay, so um, using the data we have and then using the color schemes, you realize that all the transcripts are in this region. And so this means that these are down regulated transcripts. I'm making this interpretation based on what I'm seeing here. So take note of that. So the transcripts here from the image here, they are down regulated. So that is for the MA plots. Now let's look at the last plot, which is heat maps. Heat maps are a great way to visualize and interpret your gene expression data. And so with heat maps, you usually have a color code here to also help you to do the interpretation. This heat map was generated uh, using the differential express genes. So we have their expression levels across the 12 samples here. And so using the color scheme here and then comparing them to each other, we see that those genes that um, have low expressions have this color here. They are in this region, and those that have high expression levels are in this region. And so, if you look at this heat map here, if you look at this figure, the gene MSTR gene dot seven two eight has been expressed in high levels across the samples, all the samples. This is followed by this, and we also have the others here. And so, if you combine heat maps with clustering methods, you'll be able to identify groups of genes or transcripts that have similar expression patterns like what we have here. And so by using these clustering methods, you'll be able to identify genes and that are commonly regulated. And this can also help you to identify biological signatures that are associated with a particular condition. So uh, that's how you can use HMAP to interpret and then also make some um, inferences. And so here you can see that if you look at the genes here, there are two main clusters. Okay, so we have cluster one here, uh, which um, have high expression levels and we have cluster two here. So comparatively, we, we have two groups, those that have been expressed in high levels and then those that are, um, comparatively speaking, those that have low levels. Okay, so one is higher than the other. And so what we see here that these two have similar expression patterns and then uh, this particular one here, this other group here also has and similar expression patterns. And here you can also go further, okay, by using this um, clustering um, approach here to try and then um, get a deeper understanding of your data. The same can be used for the samples as well. So heat maps are a great way to uh, try to interpret your gene expression data. So I encourage you that you also use heat maps to do the same with your respective data.